Having some glutide and still feeling hungry, many people face this unexpected challenge. But today in this video, we're going to talk about this issue and what you can do to effectively manage it. Stay tuned. And we're going to go over some powerful tips that can make all the difference in your weight loss journey. Hi, I'm Dr. Carter with Modern Body Clinic and we are weight loss experts. In this video, we're going to give you seven tips on what to do if you're still feeling hungry when you started semaglutide. This, this video is particularly for semaglutide, but these tips I think you can use even if you're using a different medication or no medication at all. But semaglutide, what is it? This medication acts on a particular receptor called GLP-1. The effect of this medication is a few things. One is going to decrease your appetite by slowing down your GI tract, so both the intestines as well as your stomach. That effect is that you will feel fuller quicker and you will stay full for longer. It also is going to impact how your body responds to food in that when you eat, you will release more insulin. Your blood sugar will go up not as high and not as for long. So we get a better blood sugar control. It also is going to decrease your appetite in the brain because there are receptors there for GLP-1. What's going on with feeling hungry when we're starting a weight loss journey? Well, it's a couple of things, but the main issue is that you're trying something new and your body has to adjust to this. In our clinic, we do get people a meal guide and they can focus more on foods that are going to get the greatest benefit of the weight loss program. It's both as an individual getting used to that new behavior, but also the new foods take some time. The other thing too is that if you're just starting, the medication may not have the full effect yet. What are those seven tips? So we use really a checklist. Let's get into it. Now, the first thing is hydration. We really want to make sure that we are hydrated. And how do you know you're hydrated? Uh, one of those things is that your urine will be a uh, lighter color. Now, if you're on B vitamins or some other medication that change your urine, that may not be true, but in general, lighter urine says that you are pretty hydrated. How much water should we drink? I recommend to our clients that they I drink at least half an ounce of water per pound of body weight. If you're someone that weighs 200 pounds, 100 ounces of water is not too much, uh, certainly here in the desert. That amount of water will make sure that you are hydrated. Tip number two is fiber. Now with semaglutide, we do have to be a little particular in what type of fiber we are going to be eating. That's because it's slowing down our GI tract. Insoluble fiber is going to work better than soluble fiber. It is true that soluble fiber is a little more filling, but insoluble fiber will help with feeling satiated. But more importantly, it is also going to be healthy for your gut. We definitely want to incorporate more insoluble fiber. This would be things like berries, strawberries, blueberries, blackberries. If we eat more soluble fiber, the concern is because semaglutide is slowing down your GI tract that we might have more issues with uh, constipation, especially if we're not drinking enough water. I really highlight eating more insoluble fiber if you're on this medication. Tip number three, protein. Another thing that we really want to prioritize where we're on this medication or actually in any weight loss is protein. The minimum for most people is going to be 0.5 grams per pound of body weight. If we take this 200 pound individual, that's going to be 100 grams of protein that we want to shoot for. One of the things is really satiating. We want to get at least 100 grams with that, but you can go all the way up to 200 grams, particularly if you are super busy or working out a lot, you're going to have higher protein requirements. The other benefit of protein is going to help spare muscle. As we're losing weight. Unfortunately, some of that weight loss is going to be from muscle. And it doesn't matter if it's a medication you're on or you're doing just diet or exercise, you're still going to lose some muscle with any weight loss. Making sure you have enough protein will help decrease the amount that you'll lose. Tip number four is meal frequency. In regards to meal frequency, sometimes people respond with hunger when their blood sugar is low or high. Having more frequent meals, but smaller, will help stabilize out the blood sugar. If it works for your lifestyle, eating every two to three hours can help stabilize your blood sugar if you're having issues with feeling hungry. Also, to some people who have hypoglycemia, meal increased meal frequency can be helpful. Tip number five is physical activity. Physical activity is important just in general health, but in regards to feeling hungry, what this is going to do is help normalize out a couple of hormones. Actually, there's a bunch of hormones, but two that we're really looking at is ghrelin and leptin. Exercise or activity is going to help make sure these are not too high or too low. 
Tip six is sleep. Multiple studies have shown that sleep deprivation leads to weight gain. And one of those ways is it disrupt those two hormones I just mentioned, ghrelin and leptin. So ghrelin is a hormone that tells your body when to be hungry. So when you don't get enough sleep, that hormone goes up. And the other hormone, leptin, tells your body it's full. That actually will go down, which is total opposite of what we want. So making sure that you get enough sleep will help make sure that these two hormones are balanced. Tip number seven is calorie deficit. This issue is probably one of the more common reasons people are hungry at the beginning of a weight loss journey is they're not eating enough. It's important that we do have a calorie deficit, otherwise you're not gonna lose weight. However, we need to make sure that's reasonable. If you are eating 2,200 calories and you go to 1,000 calories, that's gonna be very tough. Generally, most people can do anywhere from three to 500 calorie deficit, especially with medication, 500, certainly reasonable. But more than that, it's gonna get tough, especially at the beginning when the medication might not have the full effect yet. If you're feeling hungry, you've done all these other things, then definitely look at eating more, believe it or not. Those are the seven tips or essentially checklists. Things to do if you have issues with hunger those first few weeks on a semaglutide or really any weight loss medication. I'd love to hear a comment below if which one of these tips seems like it's most related to you. Well, if you found this helpful, please subscribe for you can hear more content like this. And if you need a little extra help, check out the link below. We have a video course on how to lose weight without starving, which is great for this video, right? Otherwise, if you want to hang out some more, check out one of these videos on weight loss.